Hello and welcome to Scarred Lands, Sins of Shelzar, episode 12, Blood and Gravy. Uh, when last we met, <laughs> uh, several things had happened. There was a big party going on and uh, people were a little bit all over the place, but the, the most recent and relevant development um, was in fact that Haiku had snuck off while everyone else was kind of resting and collecting themselves. Uh, under the cloak of invisibility, quite literally, and with the intent of uh, visiting bodily harm upon Pawnless Fen, um, you snuck into his place and crept up where he, Ixel, and the uh, Gauntling are sitting around, um, and then you got up and walked off right while I was in the middle of talking to you, because that's how we do on this stream. Sorry. <laughs> um, and, uh, no, you're all good. Uh, yeah, so you'd walked in invisibly. So we've been waiting with bated breath for two weeks to figure out what the fuck was going to happen here. So, um, by all means, what would you like to do, Haiku? You are invisible up in this corner. Um, oh, I just, I'm still invisible? You have your invisibility cloak up, right? No, I, I cast, I cast an invisibility. Oh, you cast invisibility. Okay. So I'm probably... Back up, and I stabbed him, right? So I'm probably... Did, uh, did you stab him at the end of the session? Yeah, Can I, I like, stabbed I did, him, I, it didn't yeah. go well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, called, <laughs> he called for some guards, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't recall that, but okay. All right, cool. The, the stab did zero damage or missed. I don't remember which. No, it, I, it hit, but it didn't do much. Yeah, it was a little bitty damage. Oh, okay, okay. This is why we're worried for him. Mm -hmm. It's like... Haiku stabbed him with a spoon. Yes. Na, 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 na. Well, in that <laughs> case, um, I think what we'll do then is we will go ahead and... Wait, so, wait, it's freezing. What's going on? <clears throat> What's going on where? Can you hear me? Uh oh. Did we lose your audio? One second, guys. I don't... You're all frozen. Your video is uh, frozen. Your video is frozen. frozen. It, this is this is a trick. <laughs> oh, weird! He just died. Right. It's like I don't remember stabbing anyone. Oh, you guys froze. Remember, <laughs> all right, well, there was a trick in old video games where you used to literally be able to like unplug the the yes. Ethernet cable from your computer to like lag out and win. Oh, that's funny. Uh, that's mm. that's how I cheat and don't starve. Mm -hmm. Uh. As soon as I die, I just shut the program down. Yeah, Alt F4 before it saves. Rachel, I don't mm -hmm. think you should admit that. <laughs> well, it's not like she's playing Don't it's Starve competitively. Game. Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. She's not going to lose any no cheating in single player games. Just exactly. I've been saying that for a while. Lose her esports okay. contract over it. Um, well, I mean, Mike I'm sure that have... the game devs probably have thoughts, but I paid them. Right, yeah, they can think those thoughts to them damn selves. Um, well, yes. Mike has fallen off of the off of the world, so well, uh, we're going to go ahead while he's fallen off the world. We're going to change our uh, perspective and see what's going on in the hood. Mm -hmm. um, what were you all doing when last we um, had met? Uh, Ithrin is studying. Mm -hmm. Ithrin is studying, and you've got uh, basically, like, what, about eight hours of that study is done at this point? Give or take? Uh, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, I need to invest 48 hours, you said, within a week? I believe that's accurate. It's, um, it should be noted in the break. item's description. If you look it up on D and D Beyond, it should tell uh, you. No, I got hours. it. Uh, yeah, forty-eight hours over six days. And that's like double full-time work. What's going on? A lot here? of it's a lot of reading. Yeah. Clocking in overtime. Well, she had Ithrin read in the the wagon all the way back to town, and while mm -hmm. we were like, then we sat and she read. Red. Yeah, guys, while like, we were talking, she's had a whole day. 
minus rest. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. So I figure yeah. it. I'll be I'll be very generous and we'll say ten hours of rating has been done. How I'll keep that, track of that in my notes on D and D Beyond. How does that sound? Beautiful. Um, while Ithrin is studying, I see Breck and Oland and uh, Sharling are all sort of uh, partied up over in the corner. What's going on up there? What are you all doing? Sharling was making tattoos and I was watching. I'm drinking tea and also watching. Because <laughs> Breck's tired. <laughs> There's yeah, the wolf doing... tracker that's on tan and Lord knows what else is going on out there. And, you know, it's just nice to kick back with the buddies and just watch somebody tattoo things. Excellent. Well, if you're here for the tattoos, Charlong is uh, sadly going to disappoint you by spending most of today leather working uh, and making nine identical, wait, eight? There's eight of us, right? Eight. Eight identical. Soon to be seven. seven. Yeah, eight (laughs) identical. like ed- identically adorned bags. Uh, Can I assist? Yeah. Well, that's all I was uh, assisting, assisting too, so it could cut the time down. Ooh, that's yeah, as I cool. said, do you have do you have leather working? I have mm-hmm. knitting. I was planning on using you for. Uh, I was planning on using you for cutting the tattoo time down. So that's I tomorrow, can tattoo but. for sure. All right. Um, and Charlie, you were going off to play, try to make up some money, uh, cause the festival is still going on. Uh, speaking of the festival still going on, uh, Tan, you were kind of wandering off to party, right? And Lulu, you were just following to try to keep Tan out of trouble. Was that what was going on? Yep. And they have a wolf. Is that really what we were doing? Yeah, you were lustful okay, I think- and somebody needed to keep you in line. I thought yeah. originally so we were uh, attempting to go find haiku because haiku left awkwardly and people me and breck and charlie came back after flying around having a fun party mm-hmm. and then you sprinted out the door you're like oh my gosh and then, yeah, and then we decided to let him go we're like okay well i guess he's okay and, and that's why you have the it. wolf because it got summoned and we gave up on him and then it followed you miss lusty pants okay mm-hmm. well i mean but if you're gonna follow him I, I may not know, know that I'm following you. <laughs> don't know where he went. So I was just going with the flow. All right. So you're heading back over toward your place and uh, going past those city yards that are hanging out and past the partiers. And we'll get back to you kind of over here at your place uh, in a minute because Mike's back. So we're going to get back to what Mike was doing. Um, did you enjoy your stay of execution? Wait, what? <laughs> I asked if you enjoyed your stay of execution. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it means it's a pause before you get murdered. Right. Oh, yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> Love it. All right. Um, let's get some initiative rolls for everyone who's present in that scene. So uh, that would be uh, Mike. Uh, that's going to be a five. Split the party no. in the worst way. <laughs> inspiration, inspiration. You're right? Do something. No, I'm, I'm, I'm he already used it, so I'm going to wait a bit. Uh, no, didn't he already use his inspiration? It's a new round. Se- technically, it's a new session, so technically he can have Use it, use it, use it. He's going to need it. Not on him. initiative. Don't use it on initiative. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's true. That's true. I hope there's not a lot of guys. Yep. Uh, oh so God. far, there's not. Gods. Um. Run away, run away. <laughs> Haiku is too dumb to run away. <laughs> All the old classics, stab and run. <laughs> All right, so Haiku's on a five. Palmless is on a 13. Ixel on a 10. And Ixel's little pet down here, chilling down, down, chained up, goes on an eight. So Pondless, now seeing you because you've stabbed him, 
um, is going to whip around and look at you, and he's going to uh, cast fear on you. Damn right he is. So... Two seconds while I bring up D&D Beyond. As much as I try to um, make sure I've got everything prepped up before we launch, there's always something I forget to kick up. And today <laughs> the wrong button, doing... Travis. I hope muting my video accidentally didn't screw everything up. I mean, it did, but that's okay. I'll fix it in a second. So what I need you to do, Haiku, is give me a wisdom saving throw, please. Wisdom saving throw? For sure. It's going to be a 16. Okay. Might be dumb to be scared? <laughs> you might be too dumb to be scared. Nice. Um, now, you are perfectly welcome to uh, just be naturally scared of the situation. That's fine. Nah. But I don't believe you'll be magically compelled to be. Um, there we go. That's better. Oh, shit. Keep going. Sorry. You light something on fire? All right, you are definitely not affected by the fear. <laughs> you are affected by the running, though. <laughs> <laughs> and Pawnless is actually also going to get up and try to step away from you. Uh, he used an action to cast a spell, so uh, you do get an opportunity attack if you want to try to stab him as he's moving. Yeah, I'm going to cast Acid Splash. On him. Okay. He's got a. He's got to pass a dexterity saving throw. No, that's probably not going to go great for him. I assume so. Does a fourteen do it? It does. It doesn't. It passes it. Dang it. (laughs) All right. Um, yeah, he, uh, dips out of the way as the acid kind of flies through the air past him as he backs up. Um, and that brings us to Ixel, his bodyguard. So Ixel's going to hop up and, um, just dash toward you. As he does, he pulls out like a silver, he's got like a silver, um, hammer hanging from his belt. Uh, looks like a warhammer's shape but shrunken down to the size of like a carpentry hammer cool. and he runs up doesn't get quite close enough to you to hit you on that first action so he'll spend a dash to get up to you he's unable to hit but he does make it there um the creature at the bottom comes out to the end of his chain and starts squealing. Ree, ree, ree. <laughs> and that brings us to Haiku's actual action. So what would you like to do? All right. So I'm going to cast a uh, mirror image. Excellent. You do so. That's your turn. Yep. That's um, my skull. Uh, um, that, that is handy to have up. I just want to like move. Can I move? Up to 30 feet. Cool. Each of these squares is five, right? Yep. Yep. So I'm going to move right here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay. Uh, that brings us back to Pawnless, who will uh, take a page from your book and cast Mirror Image. Oh, shit. <laughs> Do 
So let's make this fun. Um, Ooh, fancy. Clever, clever. So you both have your mirror images up. Um, Axel uh, is going to run toward you. and take a swipe with his uh, silver hammer. And that's natural 20. Bang, Oof. bang, Ixel's silver hammer comes down upon your head. Oh. But... Do I, do I roll? Um, yeah, with being... your image, the way that this spell functions is um, if the creature targets you with an attack, you roll a d20 to determine whether the attack targets instead one of your duplicates. Um, so you have three Perfect. duplicates up when you started it up. Uh, so you have to roll a six or higher to change the attack's target to a duplicate. Okay. So I pass. That's 12. All right. So that moves the, the uh, attack to the target duplicate. Uh, the duplicate's AC equals 10 plus your dexterity modifier. Uh, so what's your dex mod? Uh, zero, so it's going to be ten. All right, so the attack does hit the duplicate, and the duplicate is destroyed. So basically he walks up, pops your duplicate, and um, bang, there it goes. It pops. Uh, the pet starts pulling against its chains and squealing more. <laughs> exactly like that. It wasn't um, ready. <laughs> but it is unable to do anything further. Haiku, what would you like to do? I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast on uh, Zixel. All right, go ahead and make your attack check. That's going to be a 16. Okay, just one second. That will hit. Um... So go ahead and roll your damage for your Eldritch Blast. One, two, three, four. Okay. It's going to be... It's the dice plus my spell DC, right? Uh, it's the dice plus your attack bonus. Okay. Your, your spell so attack. So it's going to be seven. Seven damage. And he moves back ten feet. Oh, excellent. And I'm going to further move over here. All right. Um, as you move that way, Pawnless is going to take an opportunity attack at you. Because you're kind of passing through his space. Um... So he takes a swipe at you with a dagger. Uh, and this dagger that he has out looks like um, almost like it's coated with some sort of like sticky, almost like saliva like goo. And it's pretty, pretty gross. I assume a 10 does not hit you. Nope. All right, so no worries there. Um, you have moved through. And that ends your turn, correct? Yeah. Excellent. All right, it brings us to Bonless. He shouts to Ixel, release the pet, let it feed. Uh -oh. As he steps in toward you.
So he moves in on you and uh, casts Thunder Wave in your direction. So I need you to make a Constitution saving throw, please. Uh, it's going to be 12. Okay. Um, that is not sufficient to resist his spell. Uh, so I need you to roll a d20 and see if uh, the effect hits one of your duplicates instead of you. I got to roll an 8, right? Or higher? Six. 8 or higher, correct. Was it a 6? It was. For it, the less, the more duplicates, or the less duplicates you have, the higher your roll becomes. Ah, makes sense. So that's going to be a natural twenty. Okay, um, so that ag absolutely worked and uh, blows up another duplicate. Another shadow clone. Basically, yeah. That brings us to Ixel. Ixel is going to dash. 15, 20, 20, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. He's going to dash down here um, and start fiddling with the keys to unlock his buddy. His buddy is going to go... Uh, Haiku, it's your turn. Oh, man, I hate it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to cast a uh, sword burst. Okay. He has to pass the dexterity saving throw again. All right. And what's your, what's your save, DC? Ooh. 13. He makes it. You got a 19. How does that do anything on a failed save or on a, on a uh, successful save? Or is it? Uh... Yeah, it's just not. Nah. Okay. All right. Yeah, he uh, ducks back. You get none of his duplicates. Oh, uh, then I'm gonna I'm gonna back up a bit. Then <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna keep closing the distance. He can't run very fast. Um, there. Are you gonna step away? But you're gonna try to step away without disengaging, right? So he will get an opportunity swipe. Yeah, he can do that. Okay. Right. 18 hits, you go ahead and give me that d20 roll, please. 18. A success. Pop goes your last duplicate. He says, you've made a grave mistake coming here, my boy. Yeah, well, this is just like... Not even the first of many, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Way to tell him. Um, and with that, he is going to spend a bonus action. And you see he and his duplicates are all surrounded by a silvery mist for a moment. As he pops right here and stabs you in the back. Nineteen get you? Just hits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you take five five piercing as he pokes you in the back with the uh, with the dagger. Uh, Ixel uses this turn to unlock his pet. Ixel's pet goes and takes off running toward you at a full clip. Uh, its speed is forty, so it can dash up to eighty. It gets right up to you. And it comes running up, all just gangly limbs and bloody raw claws and uh, 
teeth jutting out in 12 different directions and a mouth that's probably twice the size of your head. Uh, everything about this approach is uh, unpleasant, to say the least. Um, but that brings us to your turn, Haiku. What would you like to do? I'm going to cast uh, Sword Burst again. Okay. And so is th that's everyone in the area needs to make a save, right? Yep. All right. This is for the, uh, the Gauntling. That's a 10. I assume that does not make it. Nope, it does not. And this is for so Tom. Go ahead and roll your damage. It takes six damage. All right. So the Gauntling takes six. Um, Pawnless doesn't seem to take any damage. Made his save. All right. Does that complete your turn? Um, I'm gonna move here. Okay. Um, Palmas will try to stab you with his dagger as a reaction, and the gauntling will also uh, swipe at you with a claw as a reaction. Pawnless botched and dropped his dagger. <laughs> uh, the gauntling got a 15. Does that hit you? Yeah. All right, you'll take seven slashing. Cool. And that brings us to... On this is actual turn then, right? Um, so you've run and dashed again. Uh, Pawnless is going to just need to check the duration of a particular spell. I actually need to check two spells. Okay, the mirror image is not concentration. All right. It's good to know. Uh, he's going to lay a curse upon you, uh, so I will need you to go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw, please. Oof. That's going to be a six. Okay, you are cursed. Um, for the next minute or until his concentration is broken, uh, you have disadvantage on attack rolls against Pomos. As he levels a curse upon your meddlesome meddling. <laughs> uh, Ixel is going to dash toward the stairs. And the gauntling is going to run up on you. <laughs> comes running at you like the water boy. Um, <laughs> and as it does, it's going to uh, try to take a bite out of you. Uh, well, it's actually going to fire off a multi-attack routine. Um, so it gets uh, claw, claw, bite.
That's one too many. No, it's not. Um, so 17, 21, and 22, I assume those all hit? Yeah. All right. That's 12, 23, uh, 32 points of damage in total. Um, well, you down. <laughs> you down? I, yeah. need, I need you to make a constitution saving throw real quick. Also. I have... One second. If this is a disease, I have advantage against that. Uh, a, it is. So you do have advantage. Okay. Eighteen. Okay. So you do not lose your hit point maximum equal to the damage you took, uh, but you do fall unconscious. And that's where we'll wrap things up for you for the moment. Unconscious and bleeding on Pongless Finn's floor. Who had uh, killed by his skinny pig? Mm. <laughs> In the bed. <laughs> yep. I don't know if we if we pulled that one. <laughs> that was all Travis. <laughs> all right. Uh, back at the neighborhood, uh, Tan, as you're sort of making your way, uh, wandering through, you wander up by your house, and you do see, in fact, um, a couple of the Harlequins from the carnival. Um, including the one who visited you the day before, uh, visited, hanging out on your, like in front of your house. Hey guys. <laughs> they, uh, all sort of nod in unison as you approach. And the one that you had a liaison with says, um, I thought you were coming down to the to the boat. We're uh, going to be sailing out pretty soon, and I wanted to see you before we left. Why didn't you come to the boat? I did. You didn't see me? I was flying all over that place. Um, but, you know, it's probably better that you came to me. Yeah, why is that? <laughs> I'm not going to make a coming joke. <laughs> decided against it. And so... Yep. Dan does... Got it. <laughs> what Dan does say is... Well... I just don't... Uh, I don't come for everyone. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, lust. <laughs> he says, well, I figured as much, but, you know, I mean... I'm happy to uh, oblige you. Whatever, whatever, uh, whatever puts a smile on that face. In the interim, oh. though, um, you should come with us. We're getting ready to getting ready to head uh, head out. It's going to be a ton of fun. We're trying to party, Tan. Where are we? Where are you going? I mean, if it's on a boat, there's not as big a party as there is right here. Well, that's true, but I mean, we're we're gonna get on the boat. Our next stop is in Fangs Fall, I think, and then we're heading back to Termana. Would any of those places intrigue me? Uh, as far as you know, I'll go ahead and make a history roll real quick. Dun, dun, dun. I got a 16. Okay. So as far as you know, uh, Fang's Fall is kind of a rough spot. It's famous for its pit fighting, uh, particularly for pit fighters who have been um, mutated by exposure to Garak's teeth. Uh, so they become extremely gluttonous and uh, tend to like eat their opponents in the pit. Um, 
and its robust slave trade. Those are the big things that Fan, Fangs Fall are famous for. Um, Termana is a distant continent that you've heard of in stories. As far as you know, covered in jungles. Huh. Both of the locations you've mentioned do not intrigue me. I don't know, the party here seems so much more fun. Well, that's fine. You know, I just thought I'd offer. Uh, we're always looking for new recruits to come uh, join the family. Family! Woo-hoo! I forgot they do that. <laughs> the whole family thing kind of gets tanned. She's like, oh, family, that's, that's so <laughs> so fun. Oh, God. Lulu, are you, Lulu's here, right? Mm-hmm. Lulu's here. Okay. Lulu's trying not to roll her eyes too much to get a neck kink. <laughs> I think I'll look at Lulu and I'll be like, they, they, they're they what, what does that say about our relationship, Tan? I'm offended. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> are we like family? I thought so. Anime tear. <gasps> Tan is going to run and hug full wink. <laughs> <laughs> Lulu's gonna slowly walk away. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Uh oh oh oh, 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 oh bye. <laughs> one arm while the other one. Tan's got the other one. <laughs> yeah, Tan is like a uh, full spider monkeying you. <laughs> it's okay. Lulu can take it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I I knew it, Lulu. I knew we were close. <laughs> They start to wander off, and as they are wandering off, um, why don't you go ahead and give me a perception check, Lulu? Oh boy. <laughs> this is gonna go bad, Travis. This is gonna end bad. Five. It's a five, and I got to plus three. Okay. The body bag they took back with them, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you don't notice anything. Uh, the two of you... I'm pretty sure my eyes are closed. Uh, ...take off wandering to the north, uh, looking for more uh, adventure to get into. Anything? Does what? Does the wolf notice anything? The wolf is very observant. Um, probably not anything. Okay. This is probably not anything the wolf would notice. Uh, or care about if they did. Um... All right. You wander back up uh, northward. What sort of activities are you seeking in this, uh, among this carnival? Um, so I have a question. The fighter that we saw going into the pits, I'm assuming it's only like, I'm sure the rounds aren't that long. So at some point that person would probably come back out here and I'm just making, trying to, you know, keep an eye out, make sure no one's stalking us and me because I know I'm a wanted person, apparently, and going to try to get information back from... I forgot the guy's name. I'm sorry. (laughs) Oh, the fighter you went to go see? Yeah. Um, Well, I mean, he's across, you know, town at the pits where he fights, so, I mean, you could go back over there if you wanted to. Do you think he'd be done and have a message out by then, or is it too soon? I don't know how long. Probably too soon. I mean, the fight itself... Would go pretty fast, but you it's safe to assume he's probably not going to, like, go run and deliver that message as soon as he gets done fighting. He's probably going to, provided he's not being, like, stitched back together or resurrected, he's probably going to go, you know, drinking <laughs> and, and cavorting, um, at least for a time. So you okay. kind of have a free night. Man, I don't know, Tan, what do you want to do? I'm well, scared to ask that question. Well, there was lots of things going on during all the parties, and I was invited to the boat, and I also was invited to a temple, and I was invited probably to a few other people's homes. There are very many options for us to do, as I'm still spider monkeying onto your back. Many options for us to do. Oh, good. Uh, Maybe we should just make people lust after us and then go away. I will braid your hair. <laughs> All right, I'll take the braiding. I'll just keep going with it. Then. I'm just going to your it. arm hair to be braided as well? Yeah, I mean, uh, pfft, dread that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll try to corn roll it. That's about as probably. 
as much as I'll be able to do. All right, All right we'll do a lap uh, and then we'll go back to the tattoo parlor because I'm pretty sure after that we're going to run out of hair distractions. <laughs> All right, so you sort of uh, deftly, subtly, um, you know, wander back past Charlie. Charlie, you're playing, see them coming by, uh, tan on Lulu's back, um, braiding her hair, her, ver- <laughs> her various growths of hair. Um, Charlie, go ahead and give me a perception uh, check at disadvantage. Give me a disadvantage, bitch. Uh, still probably better than mine. It's 12. We'll fight so much better than mine <laughs> on disadvantage. So as they're walking by, uh, you notice something f- for the first time. Now, you've seen Tan a few times. You've spent some time with her. Um, you've never noticed before on uh, her neck... Just under her left ear, you see some sort of like a glyph uh, that is uh, appears to be tattooed. Um, looks like maybe with uh, either like a very faded ink or an ink that is meant to approximate her skin tone. Um, but you notice you've, you've never seen it before. Can I make out what it looks like actually, or can I just see there's something there? Uh, you can make it out well enough to read it if you understand uh, the language. What languages do you speak? Um, Ladean, Nash, Salzari, Manakora, Common, Halfling. I don't think Halfling's right. I think that's just the other ones I have in there. Abyssal's on there. Abyssal's on there? You said you, you do? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you recognize it as a... Um, demonic rune. Um... It's a demonic rune that signifies lust. It's safe to say that I understand that she's not always like this, right? Yeah. Yeah, you've you've noticed her so like, shift back and forth between uh, almost like total personality right. shifts. Right, so it would be reasonable for me to not assume that this is permanent. I mean, in in what sense? Like the tattoo? Like or? maybe that something is there? Right, like that the tattoo itself is not a permanent, like that itself is not always what's there. I mean, you're not sure. It might be new. It doesn't look like a fresh wound, but you never know. Um, it's definitely unusual. And you've seen her behave this way before and never noticed that tattoo before. Having said that, it's in a weird place. You might have never, just never noticed it. Before. I'm just going to note it. All right, you make a note. It's an F-sharp. And then uh, they continue <laughs> wandering past you back to the uh, back to the parlor. So as you all are sort of uh, winding down your downtime activities for the day, are you all going to do anything else before we uh, call it rest time? Mm-hmm. Uh, you said we're back there? Yeah, you make your way back. I'll probably sit down. I don't know if Tan's still attached or not. I'll be like, Tan, you're a weird bird. I don't know if you know that, but you're a strange bird, awkward turtle. I could see the similarities because of my wings. But I, I, I assume I, I don't think I actually am a bird. I know everyone does have some differences, but birds are not in my DNA. I was more so referring to your personality. 
<laughs> oh. My personality doesn't seem like a bird either. I'm pretty sure that I would be like, okay. Awkward blink. All right, and uh, Sherilyn, whilst they're having their conversation, we're wrapping up the downtime activity. Why don't you go ahead and uh, give me a, let's do a dexterity. You're going to ask me for a perception roll? Or no. All right. I was going to ask you for a dexterity check for your... Uh, tools? Yeah, for your tools, using your tool proficiency. Nice. So, yeah, you... Uh, that's with Magecraft too, so um Yeah, the so spell mean, that like doubles my efforts. And you were making pouches, matching pouches for everyone, is that correct? Yep. Uh you with the Magecraft, the assistance of everyone else uh working on it, you're able to finish it uh before the night is out. Um I assume, is there anything else that anyone else would like to do before you all bed down for the night? Okay. Excellent. Uh, you all rest. Tan, you get pretty tired. Like once somebody brings up the idea of resting, it doesn't sound too bad to you. You've had a, a busy and full day with a lot of activity uh, between okay. dancing uh, banging and flying around carrying a couple of people at the same time, you're probably fairly worn out. Um, Sounds like a full day. <laughs> so you all managed to rest. Um, while you're sleeping, anyone do anything um, in particular uh, overnight? Anything they want to attempt to accomplish first thing I think thing I want to study the weather work watching my partner do all this stuff and I'm doing the one thing that I do, but I've been watching him. So I think I want to practice to learn leather making. Is that something I can do overnight? I mean, you can certainly start that process. Yes. Okay. I don't um, know what that looks like. Should I just keep track of hours or? Uh, just note that you spent one day uh, observing it. Okay. I can do that. Yeah, learning tools is pretty casual. It's pretty casual. You just got to, like, spend time. Basically. Got lots of time. And I'd be like, hmm, I wonder where my little buddy is. I haven't seen him for a while. To which little buddy are you referring? The dead one. <laughs> my veteran the guy uh -huh. who knows what I've been through and I don't know where he is but that's cool I see that's a good question you're a little concerned about where he might be yeah because everybody got weird earlier but it's fine because like vets are fine he had an adventure what's up <laughs> just wait for haiku to come back probably having fun like kids do yes and as you all wait haiku does not in fact return Greg mm. didn't like that but no one knows where he went so <laughs> I mean my wolf has smells but we had higher priorities we had to run away <laughs> When the runaway comes back, we'll see. Haiku, you regain consciousness. Uh, you're sitting in a room. The room appears to be uh, made of sort of a stitched together metal flooring. You see a um, series of spikes along the wall, a chair with some spikes in it, and you realize that you are uh, pretty well so, like surrounded by... Uh, corpses in various states of uh, I guess mortal wound 
Um, seems like there's probably 20 or 30 bodies down here. And it seems like all of them were uh, killed by some form of violence. Um, they all appear to be, uh, you know, broken arms, broken legs, stab wounds. Um, definite kind of obvious traumas. What was that All for do? sure are dead, right? Because Spare the Dying only works on living creatures that aren't zero, right? Spare the Dying? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you have to use that, like, that basically works while somebody is in the process of making death saves. Um, so, okay. sure. <clears throat> yeah, not, the window for using it is pretty, pretty small. Uh, certainly, okay. you're fairly certain that all um every all the bodies in here are far beyond that type of help okay uh you see that there's above you appears to be what looks like maybe a um Maybe a, a tunnel that drop down from above, and you don't immediately see any doors in the area. Uh, one of the bodies sort of sits up. It's a woman, human. She looks over at you and says, Oh, you're back. Back? Yes, I was told. I was told you'd be here. Walks over. I am a fellow servant of your master. Where are we? We are in the pantry. Pantry? This is a really poorly stocked pantry. <laughs> Where is it? Pondless Finn collects corpses. Leaves me here huh. to cure and puts them in his pies. Oh, I mean, I guess I've seen weirder collections and habits. He plans to cook and eat you. Well, he wouldn't be the first. I'm delicious. <laughs> well then. Uh, the master has asked me to provide you a means of egress. Maybe simpler words. Big dumb. Head empty. Brain no working. I have been sent here <laughs> to rescue you. Oh, cool. Good. Jesus Christ. I also have a message for you. Yes. Come this way. She walks over by the chair and she walks over and like shoves her hand on one of the spikes and it just rips through her palm like a stigmata wound. She pulls Ooh. her hand off and starts squeezing blood out of it and sort of drawing like an archway in the air. And as the blood is running from her hand in this arch shape, it like literally start, stays flowing through the air and starts like sparkling and glowing. As she forms this arch. Says, Gather your allies. Any anyone you trust. Uh 
Uh, thing is, there is. Don't really trust anybody. That's not my problem. <laughs> there is an item. A thigh bone that was stolen by a group of marauding Sutak. It is important to the master that it be liberated from their possession. Where can I find them? You will smell them on the desert wind. Cryptic. I like it. She uh, drops drips the last drop of blood in the center of this archway, and it starts glowing. And then you see the street out in front of uh, Lulu's house. Oh. Uh, I walk through it. Is we'll be watching, dearie. Hey. Okay. As soon as you step through, you look back through, and you see, like, her eyes roll back in her head, her skin sort of fall uh, tight as if she uh, were a corpse, and she just kind of falls over. And uh, uh, That was a nice lady. Portal disappears. What time is it? Uh, seems like the sun is just coming up. Okay. I'm gonna go to Breck's house. Alright. And would... Uh, Charlie, I assume you would have returned to your place? Yeah, after I was done playing, I'd go to my place. And All right. Um, call it night. Tan, would you have returned home? No, I think I fell asleep in Lulu's arms. Right on. <laughs> um, oh, good. So, and what about you, Alan? Would you have gone back to the, your place? Yeah, probably. Okay. Like if it got late and we're just like hanging out, I was like, all right, see you guys. I'm going to walk Peace. all the way home. All right. Um, yeah, so- I'll be next door. Like, like, oh, and- let's do this again. This was so calm. Like so <laughs> calm. <laughs> so Haiku okay. comes, uh, the, the sun rises, Haiku comes knocking on, on the door. Um, this wakes you all up. Uh, go ahead and give me your D8 roll, if you don't mind there, Tan. I got an 8. So that means you're unaffected, right? I'm free! I'm Ooh. free! Oh my goodness. It's going to be awkward when you wake up in my arms. <laughs> yeah, so you, no, wake, you wake up to the sound of banging on the door and the sudden like realization of how you've been behaving for the last several days. I think I awkwardly unwrap my tail from where it was. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, and then I, if, if Lulu's still sleeping, I think I'll like tap the forehead and be like, someone here. <laughs> Uh, this wakes everyone else up as well. Oh, good. Uh, Ithrin, you're sort of passed out, like, with a book on your face. Um, <laughs> so you hear the knocking and sort of shoot yep. up to consciousness. And, uh, Breck, I don't know what, what you're doing as you're sleeping, but you wake up to the knock on the door. Breck's awake. He's leatherworking. Oh, that's right. Breck know. doesn't sleep. I don't know if I'm the closest to the door, but Lulu doesn't have a lot of boundaries in case no one's noticed yet, so I'd probably go to the door like, who the hell? All right. You see Haiku standing there. Whoa, does he look rough? <laughs> he looks, looks pretty rough. Uh, Haiku, you are healed. 
Um, but he looks like he slept in an abattoir last night. He's just got blood everywhere. Oh, shit. What happened to you? <laughs> what fight did you run away from this time? I was just running some errands today. When Breck hears all that, he's gonna, like, be nosy and be like, Oh, it's the dude! And he's pressed the dissertation. Boom! Hey, look what I did all night! And, like, immediately take him to leatherworking. Because he obviously needs to know. I've been like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, at this point, Lulu's super suspicious of Haiku. She's gonna be like, I don't know, we should be letting him in here. I've been running errands, coming back covered in blood. I'd be like, I, Lou, I, I, she Lou. will say that. Lou, Lou. That's not how we treat our friends. Bro, look! And then back to leatherworking. <laughs> I think Anne will be like, been there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody, and Lulu will be saying this, I don't know if anybody else is suspicious, but coming back covered in blood with no explanation makes me nervous. There's no oh. more blood. He's, I cleaned him. Hardcore watching. <laughs> And I suppose you look much different coming back from one of your fights. People know where I go. I am not shy. Yeah. I mean, say la vie. <laughs> or some orcish phrase that basically means, you know, say la vie. We all have our business. Yeah. It means, say, it means say la vie by an orc. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means. Hey, bro, want to go for a walk? Yeah, for sure, bro. I'm bringing one of the leatherworking kids. I'll be like, sure, long. I'll bring it right back. Pinky swear. Pinky, and I motion pinky swear. Um, Tan, your neck is itching like crazy. I don't like that. <laughs> we got a drug addict and we got a spy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway. The rest of you who are in the room, uh, Breck and, and uh, Breck and Haiku step outside, but the rest of you certainly notice Tan like scratching at her neck. Tan, why are you so itchy? I did a lot of stuff yesterday. I might have caught <laughs> with your neck. <laughs> <laughs> there was that one guy and that girl and then the wolf I'll look I'll go over there and be like let me look at it me uh, you pull it aside and you see a, a rune uh, it looks like uh, a know? looks like it's written in infernal or abyssal it's in the in the infernal language Um, but I can tell it's a rune for sure you can tell it's a rune of some sort, yeah. I'll be like, hey guys, there's a weird mark on Tan's neck. I don't read whatever language this is, so I don't know what it is, but it's weird. I feel embarrassed, because I'm pretty sure it was probably something, probably something naughty. Uh, Ethrin will go take a look. All right, um, do you speak uh, Infernal or Abyssal, Ethrin? I speak deep speech. Okay, so Titan uh, speech, effectively. Okay. Um, no, there's no no similar. Uh, there, there's no similarity to the language. You you have no idea what that is. Um. Uh, okay, in that case, uh, I'll say like, oh, that's a bad rash. You've got about a week to live. <laughs> <laughs> What? Is, it, is it at all similar to Slarecian? Slare? Slarecian? No. Yeah. Damn it. Hmm. Um, if Ithrin tells me I, it's such a bad rash, I have a week to live, I'm going to look in the mirror at it. If there is a mirror of some sort. We have shiny things that Alan made us. I don't remember where those went, though. Yeah, you have, there's definitely... You're in a tattoo shop. There's definitely a mirror. <laughs> Right. And when Anthony sees you do this, she's just gonna like start laughing. Yeah, you uh, are. Are you out there, Sherlock? Are you awake at this point? I mean, if people are like in the shop, I assume I got woke up by the the knocking and. That's fair. Out. 
So you walk out and you see Tan checking herself in the mirror, and uh, she's definitely looking at a, a mark that's clearly there on her neck. Uh, seems concerned and confused. Do you speak or read uh, Infernal or Abyssal? Nope. I speak it. Yeah. Um, so you see this rune that's uh, tattooed isn't quite accurate. It looks like it's actually um, a very, very old branding scar. Um, it's not raised from the skin, but it it says it, it does indicate lust, but it's it's more than that. It's not just like a direct translation of lust. Uh, it appears to be something that is like commanding a binding of lust of some sort, something you would use to uh, chain or contain uh, an entity that was tied to that impulse. Um. I get very concerned, but I don't know if I would be talking about it. Okay. You make a face. Um, I ask uh, if if you read that language. Um, do you know what it says? Yes. Uh, it appears to have. Lust in it? Sorry, my internet's being weird. I hope. Do you hear that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it appears that lust is on my neck. When did you get yeah, that tattoo? It's not a tattoo. Um, Lulu, I'll Lulu. say, like, kind of plainly. Uh, Lulu wouldn't know the difference. What? What is it then? It looks like a tattoo. It's not ink. How'd you yeah, get I don't necessarily know, but I've felt it before. But I've never, it's never appeared as a rash. Is it, I'm, I'm, I'm really going to die? Um. No, you know, I was just fucking with you. <laughs> you dirty rat. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> um, I check. I I look at it. Is it like a fresh wound, like at all, or is it like look like it's been there forever? Um, your proficient with tattoo is supplies. Make a wisdom check that includes your proficiency bonus. Uh, okay. Um, I don't think I have a button for that, so I'm gonna hit. Uh, tattooist supplies and remove three. So 11. Okay. Um, it looks very old and it looks mildly distorted. Uh, the kind of distortion you would see if, uh, for example, uh, someone had been branded... Like scars had healed over. Uh, not a, well, not... Yes, but the kind of distortion you'd expect to see with, like, weight loss, weight gain, um, a change in size, perhaps. Um, like, maybe this was applied when she was, like, literally smaller. Mm-hmm. Looks like this mark has probably been with you for a long time. I would venture to say near for you've it's grown with you. Yeah. Uh I could see that being the case. I I don't like that it's showing right now. I, I've never seen this before. Well, did anything strange happen yesterday that would have caused it to rise to the surface like this? 
I feel like I'll I'll list off twenty five strange things. But <laughs> with that, is one of them getting hurt by the priestess like touching you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like on the doll. Hmm. I probably wouldn't say hurt. I'd say I had a burning yeah. sensation from a priestess. And would you point to where? Mm -hmm. Joe was, was on it? the doll. <laughs> yes. Where, um, where did she hurt you, Tam? <laughs> she hurt me right here. Oh. That's where the burning sensation was. I, uh... I mean, if she actually casts some sort of blessing on you and you have a um, uh, is a geese the right word? I'm trying to think of like what like isn't there a word like a like a demonic mark that uh, a geese would be one a, a pact um, yeah anything along those lines yeah and like it conflicted with like a geese or a pact that you're. I'll be like, Tan, are you in a pact with a demon? I'm a monk. I am. <laughs> I have literally given myself to peace and tranquility. But I do sometimes do things that it seems as though I wouldn't do if I was a monk. And that I got in trouble in my school. <laughs> Blue is second guessing all her friends now. <laughs> <laughs> she trusts no one and believes nothing. We're, well, we're going to leave Lulu with her doubts for a moment uh, as we shift focus <laughs> outside to Breck and Haiku. Um, you're walking. Uh, how far outside are you going, I guess? No, 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 no. As soon as we get outside the building, Brett grabs Haiku, throws him in the alley, throws the leatherwork thing at him. What happened? I made new friends. This is Brett's unimpressed face. What happened? This is the vet talk. We're having the vet talk. <laughs> made new friends and they helped me out. They said that if I helped them, I could fix myself. Okay, what's wrong? Um... <laughs> What's wrong? Have you met me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm smiling. Breck's not smiling. Roz is smiling. <laughs> what happened? They gave me this sweet knife, and I just had to, like, uh, get the heart blood of the person that whispers into my ear every now and then. And um, I went to go get it, and then, but I didn't pay attention to the rules right, and I thought it was just any blood, but it's supposed to be heart blood. So I got his neck blood but I didn't get the blood I needed. Uh, so I got in trouble, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I think I died or whatever, but I'm back because my friends brought me back and uh, they told me to bring someone that I trust with me to go find some like thigh bone or something of like an ironborn. And I don't know, I think we're friends, but I'm not sure. They're really nice to me. Only ones who are nice to me are you, all in, and sometimes Charlie. So I don't really trust the rest of them. So I think maybe you, I don't know. We got to go find a thigh bone though. So let's while, go. While this conversation is going on, Alan, it's going on directly outside your window. So like you're <laughs> <laughs> so you're yeah. you're in a oasis <clears throat> surrounded <laughs> by uh, like beautiful trees and the bubbling spring water. It's super refreshing as 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 the gentle breeze, very rare in the desert, blows this oasis water up in, in toward you and you get uh, the scent of, of fresh water and there are five or six uh iron bread gentlemen who are fanning you and feeding you grapes and uh oiling one another and yourself up and then you hear this conversation <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um, i think it's just maybe like you and then maybe Alan. she's nice she helped me win uh uh tan Stole my my coin that one time, so I don't know. We should all get that five bone though, because so, um, I don't. I want to make a good impression on my new friends. I feel like is there. I feel like there's a window that goes like this, and I right. can kick it out. Right, and I'll sure. Them from behind, <laughs> <laughs> and I just stick my head out. It was like, hang on, I'm gonna check if there's still a five bone left from when we burnt that one corpse in my forge. 
<laughs> and I'll be I don't like, think that's what they want. Way. They want a specific one, I think. <laughs> It needs to be supposed to smell it in the desert. Um, make a dexterity saving throw for me, real quick, uh, Haiku. Um, fourteen. Okay, you manage to like duck as Alan whips the shutter open. <laughs> <laughs> there right. she is. Well, I'm coming with then, and then I just kind of like you can hear clanking. And like the window slams, and then I come out and I have my like well, hammer on my shoulder. Before she sits out there, I'm gonna assume it takes you a giant beautiful horse lady a second to get out of the house. I would be like, "Why are we here?" To haiku, why are we here? Because I'm trying to fix myself. What's wrong with you? My brain it doesn't work. Sometimes I just do stuff, and I don't know. I don't have control of it, and then I wake up, and I'm covered in blood or whether it's mine or someone else's, and I don't know, sometimes it's worrisome, and I don't like it. I want to be back. Normal isn't the word, but <laughs> I don't want this anymore. So, Brex says, hey, who said they could fix that for you? Mistress Jasmine. How can she fix that for you? She's just Mistress Jasmine. How can she do anything for you? The dagger, it talks to me. At that but the point, dagger can't fix you. The dagger just talks to you. Alan does come around. It's supposed the... to like give me like direction or something. So it's supposed to like I guess I don't know. Okay. They said it would work. So I'm not Rex. Not trying to doubt your story. He's trying to see like why do you trust these people and why didn't you like come to us who you just said trust you and take care of you and did the good things. So I'm just trying to get to the bottom of like what did they say about how they could fix you. Powerful be- beings tend to make a really convincing argument on me. They gave me this, and like little uh, eldric energy comes out of my like. Okay, hand. powerful beings. We're getting somewhere. Great. Who's that? <laughs> I don't know. Whoever's in this knife. I didn't pay attention. I just said, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to poke the knife, but the handle, the knife part. I'm going to poke it, and I'm going to see what happens. Uh, you poke it, nothing happens. But uh, you and Alan, okay. since Alan walks around the corner with her hammer over her mm-hmm. shoulder. Mm-hmm. Um, dressed in what, Alan? Are you? Did you like armor up, or are you just? Yeah, <laughs> right. I armored up. I'm like overdressed. I have my unicorn helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> right on. I'm um, really excited about that. I'm like, wow, how big is that? Did you make that yourself? <laughs> all right, all right. So <laughs> the two of you can both make a religion check as you look at the markings on the handle of this dagger. I mean, I'm just relieved that I didn't die when I poked it. Like, that was definitely a concern. Um, hang on. I'm having troubles with my sapphire. Okay, I got a nine. So it's probably not... I'm not going to know enough, but... It's nine plus... So, eleven. Okay. Um, you don't... Nothing jumps out at you. Uh, what did you get on yours, Brick? 18, 15 on the dice, plus three. All right. Uh, Yeah, you definitely recognize the markings on this dagger. This is a dagger um, that's used in ritual sacrifices to the goddess Belsabeth, who's worshipped by witches, shapeshifters, and uh, assassins. Is is Belsabeth like a titan or a god? Do I know that? She's She's a goddess. She's one of the gods. Goddess, okay. Okay, so it's she's, she's on the evil, fence. We're on the positive side of the fence, right? She's a, a, a basically a, a neutral evil god. Oh, I see. Okay, do I believe that she has the power to fix him the way that he feels like he wants to be fixed? I mean, the gods can do all sorts of crazy shit. So, yeah. Okay, okay, I'm on board then because at first I thought he was just being like hoodwinked by the jasmine lady, but like if there's an actual person attached to this, all right. Also, I'm pretty sure by the end of the day, I got to get Thomas Fenton's heart blood. So just saying, that's going to be on like the list of things we should probably be doing by the end of the day. Breck's gonna anyway, let's go. I'm not in for heart blood. We'll see about the thigh. Are there any rules about the thigh bone? Okay, okay. One at a time. Um, I'm just supposed to follow the scent in the desert or something like that. I don't know what that means. You can't smell bones in the desert, right? 
So, so you they really want, think? You just want you and us to go to the desert where several people almost died. I guess. And I'll be like, count to 27. And then I'm going to duck back in. I'll be like, I'm calling in that favor, Lulu. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say no. I just got roped into that. Okay, I need I need us. We have a mission. We got to protect our person. I need everybody out here as everybody. soon as possible. Okay. <laughs> I'm starting to get deflated by the minute. Deflated. I was like, Alan, hey, Alan, we are, we are a great team, Alan. We need you. You're a whole team on your own. That's why we need you with us. We can't do this without you. Hey, did I tell you I was going to hire you to give me like some cool chest armor? Like, I don't know how I'm feeling about this nowadays. What do you think? I think I started pending a message to the sorcerer that was going <laughs> to cast the spell today for me saying that, uh, we'll we'll have to meet in a couple days. Wait, I can you speed it up? Outside town. <laughs> love the town murder homos. Hi, Matt. Mike, Mike, I love your commitment. Oh. That's amazing. <laughs> and I, I missed it. What were you saying? What, what was Alan saying? I said you're such a kiss ass. That's oh. what I think. <laughs> I think you're just a kiss ass. <laughs> like um, I don't buy this at all. This this whole thing you're doing, Brick, like no one's that nice. Rex gonna okay. pay you for this chest armor. You think this is a, the kindness of his heart? No, no, that's not what I mean. Oh, what okay. helping someone? I she mean, like helping you're someone. not. Yeah. Oh, like, oh no, this is what I do, girl. Um. So, we'll see. <laughs> when, <laughs> supposed to meet Pawnless Finn today. Twenty-seven. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I've never uh, gotten that high before. You were, <laughs> you were still trying to set up that meeting. Uh, you're expecting to hear back from uh, Lulu's contact today. I mean, we knew it was him, but we were going to set up a meeting as opposed to just run right in. But and no one stab him in the neck and run away. <laughs> yeah. We you don't know. know that happened. You know. <laughs> the old stab and run. And if someone told me, but I don't know who we're going after yet, someone said... You owe me a favor, and I said, "All right, I guess I'm grabbing my weapons." Ah, uh, okay. But I don't, I don't know. I had a really ornate plan to turn that favor into a date, and now that can't happen. So I just need the universe and Haiku's subconscious to understand what he gave up for this mission. It's okay, if anyone tells <laughs> Lulu what we're doing in this pondless fan, it'll feel like a date. Ah, uh, good, good. Wink. With him in my, my great axe. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so you're making a note to the sorcerer uh, to tell them to, to tell them what exactly, Sherlyn? <laughs> you're muted. I can't. Hear you. Sorry. Uh, like a, a one to two day delay, uh, and uh, I apologize. And I will include an extra tip. Uh, I hope you will still be around. And amid all this chaos, what is Ithrin doing? Uh, Ithrin is just like, oh, I've got a book to read. <laughs> this is not my problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we'll be good. You can try to walk and read if you'd like to. Are you all going to go over and... Uh, well, we have the cart, right? Right. Ooh, you want to ride in the cart? You can have shotgun. You guys are going to get yourself <laughs> killed without me, so I guess. I have food in my cart. What are we doing? Yeah. What was I don't that? know. Where it's we're going. an adventure. Who cares? Let's right. Just I'm just following people at this point. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to stop and grab Charlie? Yeah. This adventure is costing me a very good plan. You can do your plan in the cart, Sherlong. You can ride in that cart. I'm but they can't up. because we hired a spellcaster. Oh. I mean, you can I'm wait. Nervous. You can hold off. Uh, is Tan doing anything else now that this conversation has happened regarding the uh, marking? 
Um, this is an interesting question. <laughs> I think that as like myself, I don't get to be myself very often. Um, I, I think I would stay with the people who are at least causing stuff to happen. Uh, but no, this is interesting. And I, she doesn't believe that she's less interesting than the other horned one in the group. <laughs> right on. So, Charlie, you're waking up and like having, you know, some some uh, hot brown morning potion and getting your day going. And you see uh, the cart come pulling up, Ithrin in the back, nose in a book, everybody else kind of uh, loaded up for bear as they pull up to the front of your squat. Uh, <laughs> One of us has to yell, get in, bitch, we're Wait, going Charlie, Charlie. Hey. I see the <laughs> We're not getting tattoos, are we? Because I don't want a tattoo. I know that, that Tan's into that, apparently, nowadays. But, like, <laughs> we'll talk I'm not down. It. We'll talk about it. That's fine. Get along, little kitty. Oh, no. <laughs> I feel like she's being really peer pressured here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's Charlie. Oh, that's, I always land on my damn feet. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we got real close. Her, me, and Tan. We had an adventure. It was great. All right. You all start making your way uh, out of town to the edge. You're heading out into the desert. Uh, is there still getting- a party going on? on? Uh, there yeah. is. There is still a carnival going on. It's not quite as um, mad as it was yesterday. Uh, the big party is for the first day. The re- then it sort of tapers off for the remainder of the week. Um, you can navigate the streets now, which was a problem yesterday. Um, I thought so. It's like between like Christmas and New Year's. Year. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <Kinda. laughs> Can I download like the information from the wolf about what happened when Tan and Lulu were out? We have like our little mental conversation now that we're all back together. Yeah, I mean the wolf. I think it's evident. The wolf probably wouldn't her. still be there, but you can search before the wolf disappeared. You can kind of find out what had happened. Okay. My hair will still be braided. I didn't unbraid anything. I'm not into that. Brick doesn't question that. That's fine, girl. <laughs> this looks like a badass hairy orc now so you're welcome uh, a berry orc you mean because she's a bear now what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> get out of my cart <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm such a hater <laughs> so so Breck would definitely be interested in the whole like she said he sent the wolf out to make sure Tan was okay and so can I like do like an insight roll or like check check out Tan and see how I think she's doing or I don't know what that looks like. Travis. Uh, just in general to check on her. I mean, yeah, uh, sure. Go ahead and make an insight check. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, I'm continuing the conversation that I was having with Tan about the tattoo before we got interrupted uh, or the uh, mark. And um, so, I mean, I would guess that it's been with you since birth. It, it, seems to have grown over time like as you grew I got it. Um, are you guys that, talking about the thing on her neck yeah they got oh. lust tattooed on you when you were a kid uh-huh. i speak in front of can i actually clearly read it uh yeah you can clearly read well, it. charlie um what does it say lust. um yeah it just well, says lust though like what it actually says uh Specifically, is that uh, this marking uh, shall bind a servant of lust to this flesh? You're you're uh, you made a deal too. I go to tan. I I don't say it out with what it said. I just kind of like look at her and like I see it and I'm like, oh, you made a deal too. And with an 18, by the way, um, you can probably get a pretty good beat on where tan's head's at. So, how is tan feeling? Why don't you tell uh, Breck how you're feeling? Rex getting an inside shot. What's going on, Tan? About me? Mm-hmm. About your your brain and your mental state and emotional state right now. Um, Tan 
is always guilty when she turns back to herself for mm-hmm. what she's done before. Mm-hmm. But it's hard for her to control herself when she's in those states. And the fact that there's an actual brand of something that she did to herself, she just feels like that's how bad it was this time. Okay. So guilty. And when when somebody says, like, you, what did you say? You said you take an oath or you made a deal with somebody? A deal. I made no deals. There's no deals here. So. So if, if you get right cool powers like I do when you when when you did the thing when you're when you you know <laughs> you're like oh I don't know what he's talking about. Rick's gonna need another iced tea date with his bestie after this, by the way. But I'm gonna Warlocks like, make a pact hand. with, him, with oh, the demon. Okay. The devil get their power. Hey Tan, you remember when you flew me up and we did reconnaissance and saw things? Can you help me make sure we're going to be safe leaving the city right now? I, I thought we were going to Palmas Fin, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That happen. one. We're going to make sure it's safe. Tan, can you help me go up there and make sure it's safe? I'm going to pull the vet card. I'm a vet. I can do recon. Just, I, I just need you to get me up there. Tan will get out of this conversation any way she can. <laughs> very awkward. He knows. Oh, yeah. He knows. <laughs> All right, so the two of you are flying upward. Um, in terms of meeting with Pondless Finn, you have no, you have not heard back yet. You're, do you want to try to head over to that uh, fight club first before you go anywhere else? Well, um, I thought Mike was leading us. To yeah, him, I was. Or Breck just flew off, and Breck was the one that was trying to get us no, all no, no. rallied. We're not going to Pondless oh. Finn. I said we, I need a favor. We need. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're looking for that thigh bone right now. I think. Yep. In the desert, right? We're going to the desert? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's where we're going. All right. So the two of you, <laughs> uh, Tan and Breck, fly up into the sky. Are you, is there anything in particular you're trying to accomplish while you're up there? Yes. So since I know she feels guilty, I know she's not going to drop me. And I'm going to be like, I know you're not just lust. I heard what they said about you. We've had some instances. So what do you think's going on? Because that's not it. Should I do an inside check? Because I know stuff about myself, but I don't know exact stuff about myself. That's really fun. Are you doing an insight check on yourself? That's super cool. Um, I don't know. Should I or should I? <laughs> um, I don't think you would need to. You can just access whatever knowledge you have, you know, and try to extrapolate from that. Um, so I try really hard to do the right thing and do by my order of the elements and make sure everything I do as a monk is honorable and reasonable, but sometimes I do get these kicks to do other things. But they're different. It's not always lust. I remember not lust and you seem fine now. You did not always seem fine. I, I feel very much so forgiving and tranquil and trying to be my best self and help out the group and the party the best way I know how. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely feel different things at different times that don't always equate to me being my best mom. Well, there's nothing wrong with you. Do you know that part? That there's nothing wrong with me. I would hope so. I don't but know, because you seem pretty beat up. You seem pretty beat up. So do you believe there's nothing wrong with me? Because I heard there was nothing wrong with me. I believe that there's nothing wrong with you. I believe you're beating yourself up for things that you don't understand. Um. Yeah, Uh. this would be one of those things... I don't necessarily understand about myself that showed up and it's the first time it actually showed up. Cause you were passed out in a cart for about 12 hours. It was very not lusty. So I imagine that you were not always this thing. I don't know if the ruin as Sherlock called it changes or adjusts, but this is the first time it's ever actually appeared on my neck. And I would say that as someone who speaks Infernal, uh, it's probably not a good thing that it's also pretty demonic. 
Hmm. How many, how many times has this happened to you? That I've gotten a, a ruin on my neck? No, that you, you feel the need to do things that you don't necessarily want to do normally. Oh, every day, every day. Every day forever? You're like your whole life? Forever. Hmm. It's almost what do you about that? And a tail. And a tail. But, oh boy. But that's how I became a monk. Is that my my master actually saved me and helped me try to overcome, but I don't know where he is now. Hmm. Does anything help? I'm sorry, what? I Does missed. anything help when you go through these things? Or do you just write it out? Um, usually going to sleep is the best thing for me. Going to sleep? Breck's going to remember that and think about pharmacies in this world. <laughs> going to sleep makes me sometimes come back to me. Otherwise, I just get these very intense impulses to make me do things that I don't necessarily always want to do. Mm. But I do them anyway. Interesting. Is there anything that I can do for you since you're going through all this stuff and you obviously don't want to talk about it and I forced you into this corner? We're flying, so there's no corners. I feel very free right now. Okay, oh, good, uh, good. Okay, well, you fly as long as you need to fly. If there's anything we can do to help, let me know. And I, do you need me to make sure you don't do some things? Is there a list? Do you have a list? Because we can write it down. I'm a tattoo artist. I have great penmanship. Um, I would just say it would be nice if if this thing is actually describing something about me, if you guys could keep an eye or if you know anything that could help me, I, I understand that that priestess seemed to have wanted to do stuff to me. At the docks. I thought she knew something. Do you want to see her when we get back? It might be a good idea. I don't know. Okay. Well, if you're, so Breck obviously doesn't understand the depth of this. If you're different people all the time, I need to know what you need me to want you to do. When we get back, would you like to see that person no matter who you are? I would think it, it might be the safest thing. I don't know what religion they really are and what they do, but as long as that's an appropriate thing, Okay. Monk, I would I would just make sure that the religion check no was touching there. the doll in weird places. Got it. <clears throat> all right. While they're flying overhead, what are you all doing below? You're debating about where you're going to go. Is that am I understanding that right? I'm thinking about shooting them down because they're taking <laughs> too long. <laughs> I'm just asking where the hell we're going. I mean, the desert. Yeah, basically. What do we need in the and desert? The hip! The hip! <laughs> An iron bread born thigh bone. Yeah, thigh bone. A thigh bone. That's what? a weird thing to need. Thot, thot, thot. Hmm. Okay. What my friends want. Your friends? The ones up there? No, different ones. Oh, good. I'll have you know. You just hurt Lulu's feelings, Haiku. <laughs> I'll have you know, Haiku, if you are the one that leads me to my death, I will, I will forever <laughs> haunt you. And you wouldn't be the only one. <laughs> it, seems, it seems that is true. <laughs> I'll, I'll say something think to the extent of that me and Ithrin can't be just standing in the street too long because we have people hunting us. Oh, I think they're going to be hunting me pretty soon, too. We might as well get out of town then and figure out what to do anyway. And he's going to have his own heart. So. That's true. Okay, I can't be. Who's hunting you? Haiku? They want, they're hunting you. Palm is Ben. Ben. Well, then I say we should just go kill him. <laughs> That's, we have to like the end of the day to do that. I, th I feel like if we're going to the desert, it's going to take longer than a day. You all want to go kill Bonless then? I mean, I was supposed to have a meeting with him, 
Do you want to turn that into something else? Yeah, but the problem's going to be sneaking me in now. <laughs> I can fit in a box. You can say it's a gift, <laughs> and then he opens the box, and then I stab him in the heart. And then we can all just go back to the desert. I mean, he live happy ever after, and now there's no bounty on Ithrin or anybody. You could go invisible. But then I'm going to lose my spell slot again. I did that last time, and I should have saved it. Okay, hide in the cart. Okay. <laughs> oh, your friend's again. <laughs> all right, so about this time, uh, Breck and Tan swoop back down to the group. The cart is still moving, and so far has continued moving toward the city gate. Um, are you going to stop and, and uh, readjust your direction and head to try to make that meeting happen? Or are you going to continue into the desert? Lulu will support whatever Haiku wants to do because hers is not a time-sensitive thing. But if he says one of his priorities is to go kill Pomelo's Fen, she's not going to say no to that. I'm going to ask her if that affects the favor that I called in because it was for him. I mean, I will kill Pomelo Sven on my own favor. Okay, then I retract <laughs> my favor, and we do what Haiku wants to do. Go team. Yeah, the dagger says I'm supposed to kill the person or get the heart blood every any other day or else. I don't know what or else is. All right. Let's go see if I have a meaning. Otherwise, I guess we're just going to go barge into his bakery. That'll be fantastic. Cool. You're all being so nice to me. Does anybody have friends they want to invite? That's because that's what real friends do, Haiku. Remember that. <laughs> all right. Uh, you change directions and start making your way to the fight club. And uh, I believe, uh, unless anyone has anything else that they want to address before we wrap things up, I think that's where we'll call it for the evening. Um, so. Uh, uh, do I get an extra hour of reading time in? Yes, you get an extra two hours of reading time in with all the debates and so and funny. back and okay. forth. Good job, Ithrin. <laughs> I'll take That was a nice roleplay game today. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. A lot um, going on. Should have, uh, there, there were a few questions introduced that hopefully you'll spend some time uh, thinking about and addressing. And just for clarity's sake, because I'm not sure if, Haiku is misremembering, or if um, Mike is misremembering, but they did not specify that it was an Iron Bread's bone that you were supposed to be acquiring. Oh, they did not? No, they said oh. you were supposed to be getting a bone, a thigh bone that was being carried that had been stolen by a band of Sutak. Oh, okay. We have good My experiences bad. with them. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, because I was a little worried about offending Oland. No, we won't. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Oland's just like glaring at you. So <laughs> I have All right. a leftover glare from last time. <laughs> so that leaves you with how many hours left, Ithrin? Uh, I am at twelve, so I've got thirty-six left. Okay. Rock and roll. It's nice. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's that's where we'll call things off for this this session. We'll be back in uh, two weeks' time. Uh, let's go ahead and do our uh, our introductions and doobly doos and and uh, pertinence and all that jazz. And let's start things off with Charlie. Give us your pertinence, please. Hi, I'm Sarah Sharnover. I play Charlie. Um, both she her. And I'm an author and an author tuber, and now I have a Sims channel on YouTube. Uh, I got a whole bunch of things. My links are all in my videos. That's over at youtube.com slash Sarah Tremover Author. Excellent. Uh, next up, we have Tan. Please give us your pertinence. Hey, I am Tori Clark. I play Tan, both she, her. Um, I've been working on some writings regarding the seven deadly sins, so this is always a fun thing for me to play anyone who is influenced by the seven deadly sins like Tan is. I don't know if the seven deadly sins is in this type of lore at all, so it's just a very interesting time for Tan to have people 
try to discover that she's under these seven deadly sins that are, I guess, more of a Christian religion, but we'll see what happens. There are demons that come out and they have influences that are humanoid in, in effect. So I, I'm excited to play it. I think it's really fun that we're discovering that the two tiefling are more messed up than anyone else. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you are that's kind of fun. disaster tieflings. That's true. And we don't even know we're tiefling, so that's great. <laughs> oh, I know I'm a tiefling. You don't know you're a tiefling. <laughs> you don't know, but I don't, I don't know a lot know of it. things, but I definitely know I'm a tiefling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're better off than me, madness boy. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and anything that uh, you want people to check out? Uh, as of now, no. I, I mean, if you follow my Instagram, fun. I'm, I'll be posting stuff, but other than that, there's nothing like ready to go yet. Okay. Cool. Rock and roll. Uh, next up, uh, Charlene, please give us your pertinence. I just realized the cameras got whacked again, but uh, Charlene, give us your pertinence, please. Hi, I'm Corey Frang. They, them, Charlong, uh, they, them, he, him, whichever. Uh, and, um, yeah, Charlong, the water sorcerer, didn't do any fun. Uh, I didn't make any iced tea today. Oh. Um, which is strange. We should have had, we should have had something iced this morning for breakfast. <laughs> for sure. Uh, and, um, yeah, uh, looking forward to exploring the histories of uh, the various cultures of the Scarred Lands. And Beautiful. Love it. Um, I don't have anything to share personally, so I'll just pass it along. Cool. Rock and roll. Next up, we have Alan. Give us your pertinence, please. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Alan. In real life, my name is Milena. I'm a artist and YouTuber. Um, I don't know. Alind is really just, I think she's got ants in her pants right now and she just wants to get out and do something because we've been sitting around for too long Ew. and I just want to smash something. Um, so I guess killing homeless fan would just be the ticket for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's fair. But yeah, that's it from me. All right. Rock and roll. Um, we definitely next, need to farm XP. Next up. We have, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Uh, next up, we have Lulu. Give us your pertinence, please. Hi, I'm Allie DeVries. Uh, I play Lulu, and Lulu is on the same page as Alwyn over there. I feel bad for Palmless Fen because I'm just Hulk Smash right now, and I'm just so ready to just run a hammer slash axe through him. Nice. So that's going to be fantastic next time. I'm uh, working on actually getting a Facebook page for my life coaching. So I will have something hopefully next time. Oh, that would be great. Oh, rock and roll. Cool. Congratulations on that. My life coach. Thank She's you. She's my life coach, too. It literally changed my life and got me a new job. So look her up when she gets one. Oh, not go. the same picture as my role play. <laughs> <laughs> a little more, little more together than your character. Um, no tails. No tails. Excellent. Uh, next up, we have Ithrin. Please give us your pertinence. Uh, hey, uh, my name is Rachel. I play Ithrin. We are both she, her. Uh, yeah, I had some really cool stuff come up this past week. Uh, I'm an editor for Bionic Studios. They do uh, LARP rules for World of Darkness properties, and they just released, finally, finally, uh, LARP rules for Changeling the Dreaming that I had the privilege of editing. Uh, it is uh, through Storytellers Vault. Uh, it's currently on a $5 discount. Uh, so if you like changelings, if you like live action role play, even though no one's LARPing right now, but, you know, one day. Anyway, swing by, check it out. Uh, I'm really proud of it. It's a really good product. Sweet. And I will pull that link up uh, shortly right here. And it's uh, currently, uh, looks like it's the number one product on Storytellers Vault, so it's not hard to find. Um, That's fantastic. And Changeling sounds like it has a lot of Irish lore in it. And there's a lot of fans of Irish lore, yes. especially people who can't go to Renaissance fairs this year. So if you're interested in Ren fairs and you can't, look up this Changeling because Rachel's awesome. That's true. Yes, That's all. thank you. Uh, yeah, it, it is a really cool setting. It's a really cool game. Oh, and I run a tabletop game. Uh, also Changeling the Dreaming. That'll uh, will be tomorrow night. Tori will be there with me. 
Uh, we're going to have a couple other players. Uh, they're all very fun people. Uh, it's probably going to be a changeling versus werewolf throwdown. Oh, yeah? You're going to get into a fight? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, good the, luck. The troll player has been, uh, has been really, really wanting to fight these werewolves. There's a not werewolves, and I feel like he's a little hype about the wolf thing. Yeah, I wish you the best of luck in that fight, because if I recall <laughs> properly, yeah. uh, that's not the odds are not in the favor of the changelings. Um. <laughs> uh, well, so they, they picked a fight with the werewolves two games ago, and were about to get pasted uh, before Tori's character unleashed Kronos and managed to rewind everything oh, back a day. Oh, jeez, you nice. talked to Kronos? <laughs> that is so aggressive! <laughs> Yeah, that's like a Greek Titan. You're just a, uh, in Ireland. I mean, it's so I good. Didn't say in in role play, it is the hardest thing ever to redo what you've already tried to do. <laughs> yeah. Good thing that was the hardest. So uh, yeah, screw time. <laughs> right, it but is. Yeah. It is uh, kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, well, I think it worked out well, but um, anyway, yeah, tomorrow night uh, at. 9.30 Eastern on the Onyx Path channel. Should be good times. Definitely check that out. Um, next up, we've got Haiku. Give us your pertinence, please. Hey, guys. I'm uh, Mike Mutant. I play Haiku. I'm having a lot of fun finding new ways to be crazy and then slowly reveal <laughs> like bits of his past to find out like why he's the way he is. Um, I am a Chicago-based comic book artist. I have a comic called The Freaks, which, due to some technical paranoia and worries, I uploaded the rest of it, of the issue one, to my Patreon. So if you want to read it all in one go, for the first issue at least, uh, it's patreon.com slash Mike Mutant. Um, and I have an Instagram, uh, Mike underscore Mutant. Sweet. And definitely, yeah, do check out The Freaks. I am about... Uh, halfway through what's been posted so far. So uh, I need to go, and now that it's all up there, I need to go and check it all out in all that free time I have laying around. Um, Issue 2 <laughs> coming out soonish. <laughs> nice. So yeah, oh, go yeah, over there and get in on the ground floor with it. Um, next up we have Breck. Give us your pertinence, please. Hi, my name is Roz. I am she, her. I play Breck, who is the he, him. Romantic interest he is trying to pursue is in there somewhere. And then the two people he cares about, which are for some reason both weirdos and didn't realize they were both tieflings until about 20 minutes ago. But uh, <laughs> and, and Haiku are getting into some shenanigans and he's very invested in their future. So we're going to see how that turns out. Everyone else, he, I feel like he's like a supportive friend to... But these two, he's going to do some investigation. So um, I'm in the Air Force. I don't have all the creative pursuits as these other people. You should definitely subscribe to their Patreons and their Instagrams and all those things. I also just started to do that myself. And and that's all I got. Excellent. And uh, then we've got, uh, I guess that leaves me, huh? Wow. Um, so I'm Travis Legg. He, him. I'm the... Uh, game master of this uh of this fun gathering of folk and when i'm not running this fun gathering of folk i run other fun gatherings of folk um you can find us here mondays uh at, every monday at uh, 3 p.m eastern i have a scarred lands campaign called scarred lands family affair uh this one is, this campaign uh now runs on the first third and when there is one fifth wednesday of every month um, if you subscribe to me at patreon.com forward slash Travis Legg, you can get instant access to, uh, the podcast versions of these video on demands of these, a bunch of behind the scenes content, sneak peeks at what I do. And I do, uh, also release uh monthly, um, Patreon exclusive, uh, supplements, um, for various role playing games, mostly 5e. Uh, but I'm branching out into a few other things as well, hopefully in the coming months. Um, speaking of those exclusives, once they've been up for a while, I'm going to start collecting them and releasing them uh, 
in uh, POD and uh, PDF over at Drive Through. The first one of those is out right now. Uh, it's called Fairhaven and Beyond, and it is a collection of adventures that uh, went up on my Patreon over the past two years. Uh, it's from levels one to eight for uh, Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. And that's up right now in uh, PDF at Drive Through, and it will be in print on demand soon. Um, and everybody who picks up the PDF now. I'll be sending them coupons to get the print on demand um, at cost when it comes out. Um, other thing that came out today. Uh, the community content program for They Came From Beneath the Sea from Onyx Path launched today. Um, so if you want to, if you're a fan of They Came From Beneath the Sea, uh, you should definitely head over there, download the templates, you can make your own materials for it. If you're not a fan of They Came From Beneath the Sea, or you're not sure what They Came From Beneath the Sea is, you should definitely go check it out, because it's an amazing horror comedy role-playing game. Um, and I did a collection of what are called cinematics, uh, which are some of the powers you can get. The idea of they came from is that you are playing... The game master is also the director of the film that you're playing in, and the characters are characters in this film, but the players are also actors in the film. So there's some breaking the fourth wall that you can do. Uh, you can do things like uh, have a, a missing scene, where you're in the middle of a combat, you play your scene missing cinematic, and then it cuts to somewhere else, and you're all running away fine. And some, you the only caveat is you can never discuss what happened during that scene. So it just cuts scene, and then one of the actors is like, "Wow, I've never seen someone do that with a pineapple," and that's the last you ever hear of what happened. Um, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's an amazing backstory. Um, so I created a series of cinematic cards, uh, many of them inspired by my own time uh, working as an independent filmmaker. So there's a lot of fun stuff in there, things that you can activate. There's like a craft services cinematic where you can go take a break and go over and get a snack and heal some damage. Um, there's a uh, there's a lunch hour cinematic where you, you declare that it's lunchtime so your character gets to take a little break from the scene. Um, fun stuff like that. So definitely head over and check that out. Uh, it links up in the in the chat. And then um, I think that's it for the moment. Uh, Scarland stuff. We just had some new Scarland stuff dropped last week. Uh, the Iron Court actually um, for uh, it's the Iron Bread Settlement Vigil Watch Chapter Four. The Iron Court is out. And that uh, has fantastic art too. Like, well, I know a lot of people. Some of it's care. behind me right now. Based on, exactly based on the picture that they have, and Iron Bread have a really rich culture that a lot of characters could find, you know, a happy home in. They are a lot of fun, and it was it was really cool. Um, the author that worked on that section, uh, Josh Deach, um, he and I uh, worked really hard on making sure that we were establishing some. Uh, unique, interesting tidbits about the Iron Bread, so that was a lot of fun. Um, but I definitely recommend heading over and checking that out. I guess that's probably it for now. Um, we will be back here in two weeks' time uh, to find out if the party can get this meeting, if they can manage to pull off this assassination, and hopefully unearth some of these secrets that are starting to bubble to the surface about the histories and pasts of the various folks present so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out and then hopefully sometime in the next couple sessions Ithrin can be done reading that book yeah. <laughs> but if you haven't yet done so please make sure you like follow subscribe it is sub September so you can actually sub at a discount and now you can set them up for like subbing for a length of time on Twitch at a discount um, and I think you can save up to like 30% if you do like a six month sub. And awesome. the discount does not impact the earnings of the streamer. So not just this Good. channel, any channel that you're watching, if you want to grab a discounted sub, you can do it absolutely guilt free. It's just coming out of Jeff Bezos' pocket and F him anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, he has big pockets. That's right. He can handle. Handle the loss of your two dollars and seventy-five cents a month. 
Um, but yeah, definitely uh, make sure you're subbing. Support all the creators that you are into on Twitch, but especially the uh, Plastic Age Plays and Onyx Path channels, because those make me feel good when we get support. Um, other than that, uh, make sure you're wearing masks and washing your hands, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye.